Hi, this is Carl the Cobra Frutch, and you're watching Lights Out. This is Fessel Khan for Lights Out, proudly sponsored by Spartans Law, and I'm delighted to be joined via Zoom by the Sky Sports and Box Art Ring announcer, Mr. Big Mo. Big Mo, who's making quite the name for himself here down in the UK. Uh, Big Mo, first of all, good afternoon, mate. How are you doing? I'm good, man. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm in South Carolina right now, actually, getting ready to go announce a bare knuckle show. I do a little bare knuckle announcing here in the States. So I'm good. Yourself? I'm very well. Thank you for asking. I noticed that you're doing a bit of uh, bare knuckle work as well, which is really good. And of course, I'm pretty sure you're all, you're getting set for the trip to Bournemouth next week for the yep. Smith uh, card, which is promised to be another exciting card. I believe that was the first time I met you out in, uh, in the UK was in Bournemouth for... Yep. Dylan Smith, Isaac Chamberlain card, and it's been like a bit of a, a roller coaster ride for you since. Yeah, a little bit. It's uh, it's all happened pretty quick, which is definitely what I wanted. I mean, I, you know, I'm obviously confident in what I can do, and I, I wanted you know an opportunity to show it. But yeah, Bournemouth was my uh, kind of my my debut with Boxer and Sky, and so now it's fitting that I get to end the year with Boxer in Bournemouth. So I'm excited. It definitely sounds like a, a fairy tale story, but how would you <laughs> test that first day in Bournemouth to sort of the year coming to an end now? How would you assess your your breakout year? What have you made of being part of uh, the boxing scene down here in the UK, Big Mo? I think it's gone. Uh, I think it's gone really well. You know, I this year for sure things happened really quick. Um, you know, I've only been announcing now for about three years, give or take. And, um, you know, at the end of 2021, you know, I was starting to get a little bit of recognition nationally in America, doing a couple good sized MMA cards, you know, I was getting some publicity had a couple TikToks go viral, things like that. And then in 2022, I did the uh, Eddie Hall versus Half Thor Bjornsson fight in Dubai. And that's actually where Boxer and Sky kind of saw me. And that was obviously a big fight. And then they brought me on and, you know, they believed in me since and they allowed me to do the Shields Marshall card, you know, which was obviously a big show. And now Sky is starting to use me a little bit. And, you know, they used me in the promo trailer for uh, Eubank Jr. versus Liam Smith. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's all um, number one. I'm really grateful. <laughs> I've, I've really, really enjoyed announcing in the UK. I think that the UK fans listen, I'm American. I love America. But the UK fans are a different level. <laughs> I think it's amazing how how into boxing you guys get and the crowds that you guys can have. It's it's amazing. I, I've loved it. It's been an excellent year for Sky Sports and Boxer. You look back to February, Khan Brook, uh, Williams Eubank, Cat Rue Taylor. You know, there's been some great shows that they've put on throughout 2022 and of course we've had the likes of yourself breakthrough you know there's a lot of people talking about the Azim brothers and how talented the, the future looks for Sky but what would you say has been the main positive for Sky Sports and Boxer because you are part of the new journey as well they've moved away from uh, the zone and Eddie Hearn so it is like a new sort of mm -hmm. adventure now for Sky Sports but what would, what would you um, sort of make of the progression that they've made in 2022? Well, I think, uh, I think boxing has been in need of a bit of a facelift for a while. You know, I think it's, I think boxing shows for a long time. I think, I think they felt a little dry. I think that they, you know, there wasn't always a ton of, you know, excitement into the show itself. And so obviously, you know, how I look at it, especially cause I can affect the, the entertainment side of everything is it needs to be an engaging and a fun atmosphere. It needs to be a fun show. If we're expecting people to pay money out of their pocket for a ticket, or if it's a pay-per-view to pay money to, to watch the show, we got to give them something. And I, you know, why I enjoy working with Boxer and Sky is they are willing to try things. They are willing to try things that are a little bit different to see if they can reach a new fan base, to see if they can try something new that people will like. Has everything worked? Probably not. I don't know. I've only been there for five shows, but I think that we've unearthed some things that are interesting. You know, we did a Sunday daytime show. Why? Let's see what we can do. Let's see what type of new viewership we can bring. Let's see if we can put a Zim on that stage as a main eventer. And it worked. 
you know, let's see if we can have a, have an interactive fan zone at our shows. And it worked, it was a hit. And so I think that, you know, the, the highlight for me, in my opinion, looking at what Sky and Boxer have done is one, they've excelled incredibly quickly. You know, this has all happened so fast and they've already had massive shows. Shields Marshall was a home run. It was a show that we were told wasn't going to work. Don't do an all female card. And then it got postponed and everyone gave up on it. And then we sold out the O2. We had a co-main event and a main event, which were excellent fights between Alicia Baumgartner, M Michaela Mayer, and Clarissa Shields, Savannah Marshall. We broke records on Sky. We had 2 million viewers just in the UK alone. That's not even counting what Shields, who was the A side, brought in America. So I think that they're doing a great job getting fighters to compete. I think that Ben Shalom wants to work with other promoters, which I think is needed to put on great shows. No more of this promoter politics. I won't work with this guy. Screw this guy. I won't work with them. I think Boxer and Sky are just saying, we want to put on great shows. We want to give something to the boxing public. We want to put on entertainment that people want to watch and people want to see. And they're doing it. And I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm happy to be a part of it. Well, I've got to say that I've been very impressed with how Sky Sports and Boxer have performed um, throughout 2022. A lot of people were kind of worried, um, especially when they moved away from Matchroom and Eddie Hearn. But I, listen, I've got to say they've had a phenomenal year. I look back to February, as I mentioned, those three cards. And then I was fortunate enough to be in Bournemouth um, for at the summer, for, during the summer card that they had with Chris Binnersmith and Isaac Chamberlain. I was part of the... Um, the, the midday card for the Adam Azim Ryland Charter. I've got to say they are trying different things and things are really, really looking up. But the year begins with an absolute blockbuster down in Manchester <laughs> between yep. and Chris Eubank Jr., two huge names in not just the middleweight division, but also the British domestic scene. You said you were part of sort of um, the trailer to that. What sort of yeah. have you been given surrounding that fight what type of a fight do we get in manchester to kickstart 2023 mode i think it's gonna be a banger you know i think it's gonna be a fight that just i i i think that so obviously when connor ben and eubank were gonna fight it was a huge deal there was legacy behind it there was you know a, a pretty decent size differential between the two and and obviously it caught the public's eye then unfortunately it caught the public's eye for the wrong reasons but then I started hearing Liam Smith's name circulate. And I was like, that's an interesting fight. You know, that's okay. I, did, I just never thought about, I know that it had been talked about, but I never was sure if it was actually going to manifest. And then when it did, I was like, all right, this is, a, this is a good fight. Because when you look at it, you know, Eubank, I think, is per se the bigger star. I think that he probably carries more, you know, market appeal and interaction. But Liam Smith has fought on the biggest stages in the world. He's fought the Canelos. Like, it's not like, it's not like Eubank, in my opinion, is going to give him something crazy that Liam has never seen before. I think what's, what's so exciting about this fight is it's pretty even, in my opinion. I think that they both have things about them that could give them the edge. Um, I, just, I, I just look at it as a pick and fight, and I think they're just going to go to war. Oh, well, that is what everybody's hoping for, given how... Yes, yes. Oh, <laughs> the styles that they present I think I, I have to agree with you I think we're going to get an absolute banger but I mean obviously that's the, uh, a fantastic way to kickstart 2023 but you know as well as being a ring announcer you're a fan just like myself yeah give me the three fights you really hope that we get to see in 2023 because a lot of people have said that 2022 has been a bit of a disappointment so Big Mo flo floor is all yours the top three fights you want to see in 2023 so I want to say this, um, because even though I, I work for Boxer and Sky, I do work in the boxing industry, and I want to see boxing promotions succeed. I think that there's a lot of, there's always like a this or that, and that this is my competitor, and therefore they can't win. Let me be clear. Every promotion benefits from boxing doing better. I think that we have seen a little bit of resurgence in the past five years from boxing's popularity. That helps everyone. You know, promotions getting network deals, more exposure on boxing, that helps. That helps kind of the, commun the communal whole. And so with that, you know, I got to give credit to, to boxing providers because, you know, coming out of COVID, it wasn't exactly easy to go back to putting on shows. Well, so I got to give credit to a lot of people, you know. Um, 
But for me, number one, number one fight I want to see in 2023 is uh, Fury versus Usyk, an undisputed heavyweight champion. Got to have it. it. It is what it is. I want to see that fight. I think anyone that's a boxing fan, that's probably a top three for them. Um, I want to see Garcia versus Tank. That's obviously a, a big blockbuster fight. And then, uh, um, you know, Crawford getting back in there with Spence is interesting. I, I would be, I would be curious to see that one. Um, honestly, I mean, a you know, a smaller, more domestic fight that I've kind of been interested in is I've loved seeing the cruiserweights kind of take over in, uh, in the UK. I would love to see a Bill and Smith versus react poor fight. That would be kind of in, I, that's been circulated a little bit. I would love to see a fight like that. Um, even, I'm trying to think what other ones I'd be interested in. I mean, Eubank Smith is one that I'm looking forward to, and that's actually going to happen. Um, yeah, man, I, I don't know. That, the, definitely those two. Um, and then you could probably fit a few other ones in, the, in that third slot. <laughs> what about you? What about you? You just picked out the three fights I want to see as well, more than anything. <laughs> and I agree, yeah. Chris Smith versus React Paul, um, another great fight. Um, hopefully a great British domestic fight, and I believe that could potentially sell out the O2 arena, but there's a handful of fights. Um, Big Mo, before we end the interview, floor's all yours. What message do you have for the fans that have interacted with you over social media through throughout the UK and, of course, the US? Where can we find you on social media? And what can we expect to see from you in 2023? Yeah, well, first off, uh, you can find me on social media at official.bigmo. On uh, Instagram is where I'm the most active. So give me a follow. I love interacting with people. I always respond to DMs, uh, mainly because I'm just appreciative. You know, obviously with me being a little bit on the younger side and being a younger ring announcer and kind of, you know, having all this happen as quickly as it has, uh, the expectation has grown. Um, but it's all happened because of you guys, uh, because of whether you're a fan or whether you're someone like Faisal that, you know, runs a media outlet because of you guys, I've been able to get some distribution and been able to been seen. And I am, uh, very thankful. And what I want you guys to understand is the number one person that I look to entertain, that I look to kind of please is the fans. You know, that's who I care about. You know, announcers always care about different people. And obviously I care about the promoter. Obviously I care about the fighters, but I care about the people that are paying good money. I care about, I care about the people that are watching the sport, that are consuming the sport. So talk to me. Like, I want you guys to almost look at me as is if you guys have ideas, if you guys, you know, have some crazy idea that you always like to see a ring announcer do, shoot me a DM. You know, I, I love talking to you guys. I love talking boxing. Uh, but above everything else, I'm very thankful. Thankful for you, Faisal. Thankful for Lights Out. Thankful for all the different media outlets. And uh, let's get wild and let's have a happy new year. Well, Big Mo, the pleasure has been all ours. And thank you for all the time you've given us this year. We're hopefully we're going to see you out in Bournemouth. If not, you can definitely bank on bumping into us. <laughs> 2023 we wish you a very merry christmas a happy new year and once again thank you for your time throughout the year and thank you for talking to lights and we look forward to catching up with you as soon as possible thank you brother see you soon take care